What is the smallest bird in the world? Is the question that I will answer by the end of this show. This week is a little different, only in the sense that I thought I would try and do this video malarkey so you can see, <laughs> malarkey you know, so you can watch a video version of me on YouTube recording this, um, if you were ever interested in seeing my face while I record it. I'm not sure if there anyone is superly interested, but I don't know. I'm interested when I'm watching a podcast, watching a podcast, watching just like an episode on YouTube and there's like some sort of visual component, it kind of adds something for me, so I thought, do you know what, let me try it as well for the podcast, it's just going to be me and a microphone and if I have um, a guest that comes down the stairs and enters the room while I'm recording this, they might also be in the recording briefly, uh, but I will obviously edit it out in post, not obviously, I might not. It might be for comedy effect, it might add to something, I don't know. But <laughs> I'm trying it, see if it works, um, and hopefully I can continue doing this video thing and it'll keep working. But anyway, if you are new here, um, welcome to, um, I guess, my living room. <laughs> and if you're just listening to this audibly, then welcome to my voice for the first time if you're new here. <laughs> And if you're not new here, thank you for returning. Uh, new or old, what we do here every week is um, I share an interesting random fact. May it be from history or something that's recently happened or just an interesting fact that I think that more people should know about. And this week, as I mentioned before, we'll be talking about the invention of the pencil but before I actually get into that, what I really want to do is tell you about the Monday affirmations. Because what we do is we, this is Monday, the more you know Mondays. And I want people to start the week with some positive vibes. You know, when you're coming off the weekend, sometimes it can be hard for you to like kickstart into the week and thinking, oh, rah, if only there was one more day of the weekend, you know. I could do with one more day and you could always do with one more day. It's like that saying tomorrow never comes like that. One more day is never going to come. You only get two days of the weekend, make the most of it, take all the rest you need. And then you start back into Monday and Monday, it, they always say like having the Mondays and I'm not about that here. I, instead the Mondays that you should be having are the positive vibes. Mondays that kick, kick starts the positive vibes into the rest of the week, you know, because it's very hard doing a nine to five. But if you can keep that positive, positive outlook and positive vision, then you can make a lot of things possible and happen in your life where it might not have been possible if you had a negative mindset. And so that's why I believe in positive vibes. And is also the energy va- wave, wave, the energy wavelength that I live on myself. So uh, it's only right of me to share the energy. So with that all being said, what I like to do every week is share my positive vibes in the form of a quote. And this week's quote is by someone that I've used for a quote previously. His name is Paolo Chialo. Um If you don't know of him, he has written a book that for the life of me right now at the top of my head it has disappeared from my brain 
Um, but I am looking through my notes <laughs> to see where I used, ah, oh, snap, to see where I used this Robert Green, uh, no, Alan Cohen, no, um, I've definitely used this before, used him before, Nora Roberts, Naz, ah, oh, jeez, ah, oh, snap, um, Paolo Chialo, what is the name of the book that he, um, I'm saying this like the internet doesn't exist, um, <laughs> Paolo, see, this is like, you're going to see all these unfiltered stuff, because, you know, I'm recording this with the mic, I could record it, Pia, Chialo, ah, oh, don't even, Chialo, Maybe someone will show him Paolo Chialo and what's the name of this book? He's a Brazilian writer because I've, I've read the book myself and I just can't think of the the Alchemist. Oh, yes, The Alchemist. Such an amazing book. Paolo Chialo. Um, he has written a book called the Alchemist. I have read the book. Um, I read it when I first found out about Paolo Chialo and I was like, yo, this, this book is amazing. If you haven't read the book, The Alchemist, definitely 100% check it out. But this quote by him goes as followed. Trust your vibes. Energy doesn't lie. And I really like that quote. Only because trusting my vibe is kind of my my compass, in a sense, when I'm living life. If something doesn't feel right to me in a certain situation, or like, I always I always say to people like, I can feel the energy like in the room I, you can always feel when the energy's off or when there's certain like angry energy or like awkward energy I can feel that and it just feels horrible in my body and my system and just that idea of when you feel inside yourself that something isn't right nine times out of ten it isn't right you know um but what we do as human beings I feel is like we'll We'll feel it that it may not be right, but we're ignore we will ignore that feeling as if you know what it, it, don't worry about it. it it's something that I, I I can deal with it's fine it's fine and you, you're continually you'll keep going you keep going keep going but it's just like ah no it's fine it, it's something I can deal with I can bear it but you you shouldn't need to bear it or you shouldn't have to bear it because if if it if the vibe isn't right. The vibe doesn't lie. Energy doesn't lie. Like you can, certain person can play off in a certain way. They can say, oh yeah, I'm fine. But then you can feel that energy and you can be like, all right, cool. You're saying that you're fine. But I, it, to me, it feels like you're not. So you can, you have one or two options. You can either see if that's a situation for where you need to press on onto and be like, all right, cool are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? Or maybe it's one of those situations where a person says that they're fine when they're not okay, but they, it's just one of those situations where they don't really want to be pressed about it. They just want to be left alone, which is fair. People can say that they're okay when they're not okay. And it could just be because they don't want to really talk about it. And at the same time, I understand that talking about it is useful um, it's very worthwhile to talk about things uh, and understand them to a deeper compassion. That is not the right word that I was looking for. I do that all the time. I, I say words where I, I can't think of the word in my head or at the top of my tongue or it's at the top of my tongue or the tip of my brain. Usually it's at the tip of my brain. <laughs> and I'm just like, what is, I know the word, but it's not. I'm going to use a different word and it's not the right word or the right context, but it's used anyway. So trust your vibe is also um, kind of code in trusting yourself. If you feel that something isn't right, maybe it's not right for you. Like not everything is right for everyone or certain things might work for some people, but not work for others. And that's okay. But, when you feel that you must do something because other people have done it and they haven't complained and if you complain it makes it seem as though you're like doesn't matter forget what other people are saying about you forget what other people may think about your actions and do what's right for you 
If you don't feel the vibe and you're not trusting the vibe, then the vibe's not right for you. And get yourself out of that situation to a situation where the vibe feels right for you and comfortable for you. Because I feel like that's kind of the space where most people want to be in. They want to be in a comfortable space where they, they feel free and safe to share whatever it is that they want to share. And if then if the vibe isn't right, the energy isn't right, then they're not going to share it. So I guess moving forward after this quote in positivity, what I would say is always try and make people feel comfortable in your space, in your company, because that's the only one power that you do have as a human being when dealing with other people, making sure the space that you're putting out there for other people to uh, be in is safe and comfortable and not hostile. Um, And that's it, you know, stay positive and keep that positive outlook and give other people the positive space and safe space and a comfortable space to be themselves. And then I feel in a perfect world, we wouldn't have any problems, but we don't live in a perfect world. We live in a world with constant problems. And the only thing that I feel that we can do is try and understand them better so that we can overcome them. But not everyone thinks like me, Uh, but I can only hope that you guys, like when you listen to this podcast, you, you, you get that and you move it forward into your life and into the rest of your week. But with that being said, as I p- confessed before, what we will be talking about this week is the invention of the pencil. And I intend to get into that. So without further ado, here we go. The invention of the pencil. Okay, so seems simple enough. Um, these writing utensils that we use every day, um, We've used them since school. Um, The pencil is an implement for writing or drawing. It's um, it's constructed of a narrow, solid pigment core in a protective casing that prevents the core from being broken or marks the user's hand. Pencils were created by physical abrasion, leaving a trail of solid core material that appears onto a sheet of paper or another surface. Um, In basic terms, without all that extra mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, (laughs) mumble (laughs) jumbo. Uh, the part that makes sense or put it into common English is the fact of a pencil is basically something that you write with Um, until I did this research in this episode I wasn't 100% sure what was inside of a pencil I assumed it was lead because they're called lead pencils but oh was I mistaken when I found out that lead pencils actually have no lead in it so go figure (laughs) but anyway so the lead pencil which as i stated before contained no lead which begs the question why did they call it the lead pencil but anyway i found this out randomly while i was uh i was doing some research about the lake district uh for i guess one week um, the, last week, sorry, one week, last week I was doing, um, I did the question, what's the largest lake in England? And I did some research into the Lake District where I was looking up the lakes. And then on the flip turn of that, I was just like, oh, cool. So the Lake District, let me just find out some random facts about the Lake District. And I'm, while I was doing my scroll through random facts about the Lake District, I found, I stumbled upon this fact about pencils being invented in the Lake District. And I was just like, whoa, that's pretty cool. The, the pencil was invented in the UK. Um, 
so I wanted to find out more about it. It's, it's a little short history, but still interesting nevertheless. So, as I was saying before, the lead pencil that the, contains no lead was invented in 1564. And it was invented when there was a huge graphite mine that was discovered in Barrowdale, Cumbria in England. Um, graphite is basically just black carbon. Um, but this graphite mine that was discovered in Barrowdale, it was a huge deal because not only was the graphite uh, obviously a valuable commodity in the time, the mine that they found of this graphite, it was pure graphite. And they hadn't obviously seen this in a while. So they were like, oh, rah, well, we're going to make the use of this pure graphite. And they began mining. So this, they, 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 uh, the pure graphite was shorn into sheets that were then cut into square rods. Um, the graphite rods were inserted into hand-carved wooden holders which form the pencil, like, that we commonly know and see today. Um, I feel stupid. I, I wish I had a prop of a pencil so I could show you, but, um, like I said, this is an advert. An advert. This is a video. <laughs> like I said, I, I never say the right word. I don't understand it. So this is a video, and I can, like, I don't know, prop up here, maybe, or maybe over here, um, and I know this is going to be reversed on my video, so maybe it'll be up here or down here. I don't, I don't know how the video is going to work in the post-production and how that post-production is even going to work because that's going to be a fun experience. I don't edit videos. Uh, maybe I'll find a handy friend that can edit a video for me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going off on tangents. As you can see, um, this is my general life. I go off on hella tangents when I'm talking in general, so a lot of time I'll be talking to my mates and like there'll be like three or four tangents in the middle of one story and then I'll switch back to the, the main story so then my friends would have found, figured out or found out about three other things in that one thing that I was just telling them but hey everyone has their ways my brain still works um back on track and we were talking about pencils <laughs> so they were called lead pencils, but apparently this was by mistake. So at the time, there was this newly discovered graphite, uh, which was called black lead or plum bago, um, from the Latin word for lead ore. Um, it looked and acted exactly like lead. And it was not known at the time that graphite consisted of carbon and not lead. So that's pretty interesting. Because of um, their ignorance of the time, um, they had, or the science at the time, um, they had the understanding that graphite was similar to black lead. And they didn't have the understanding that graphite actually had carbon in it, which made it not lead. It's pretty cool. So the English had this huge monopoly on the productions of, of the product. Eh, they had this huge monopoly on the production of pencils since no other pure granite mines were known at the time. That's pretty cool. So the only reason why the English were able to create, uh, not even create, invent the pencil were because there was no other mines in the world that had found graphite. And not only that they had found graphite, that they had found it and thought about the, um, the applicational use for it to use it as a pencil which is bizarre and pretty cool that the uk or 
England, specifically in the Lake District in uh, Barrowdale, they were able to capitalize and make monopoly because no one else could give the uh, offer this service. So that was cool. It was also that not only that they were able to make the pencil that they you needed um, a specific type of pure granite, uh, graphite, um, and the pure graphite was what they were mining to make the the pen the the, um, the black carbon inside of the pencils, and no one yet had found a way to make a graphite sticks. Ah, so if they had found out found a way to make graphite sticks and they could have invented pencils sooner, or if someone else could have done this, there was an interesting development, which was where I where I found my some of my original research was about this because I I looked I obviously I saw this fifteen fifteen uh, 15 64 was the invention of black carbon but then obviously after seeing that sorry 1550 1564 was the the invent not the invention the finding of the huge graphite mine and i also saw this information about when you type in um into google um who invented the pencil the first um, thing that you'll find is a, a title that says Nicolaus Jack Jacques Conte, um, and he is known as the modern pen. Um, he is known as the the modern inventor of the pencil. So this guy, he he was a French officer in Napoleon's army, and he patented the modern method of clean furring powdered graphite with clay to make graphite rods for pencils um and by varying the ratio between graphite to clay you could make various levels of hardness so in a sense if you think about it uh, Nicolas Jacques Conte, the French officer in Napoleon's ar- um, um, army, he was the first person to figure out the science for a a more reusable form of making pencils. Although they were in, they were um, founded in the mines in Cumbria, and they were able to make use of the pure granite. The downside of that would be that the English could monopolize on the market. But with the possibility that you can mix um, uh, fire, powdered graphite with clay to make a th- harder substance and you can have different hardness for different types of pencils. And that's pretty cool, you know. So before 19, sorry, 19, <laughs> we're talking about the 1500s. So before the 1500s, pencils consisted of thin rods that were com- that comprised of soft lead, which is why most pencils, I assume, would have been mistakenly named the lead pencil because before the 1500s when they were talking about pencils they were comprised of soft lead anyway these soft lead pencils before the 1500s were mostly used by artists um funnily enough the word pencil comes from the latin word pencilius which means little tail um and the name of the tiny brush which was the name of the tiny brushes the ancient Romans used as writing instruments is kind of interesting language. The way how things are called different things, thing things are called different names, 
to different types of people, may it be the Latins, the Romans, um, the modern day human, <laughs> I don't know what to call us, um, we're not like, Ro we're not Romans, we're not Greeks, I guess I'm British, but I, I, I don't know, like, I see like, when they look back to our time as this era of humanity, what are they going to call us? That's an interesting question. Shout us out in the comments or like just anything, really. I'm just interested to know what other people think about that. Um, or if anyone has thought about that. Um, I guess I would call that a shower thought. <laughs> um, but anyway, so graphite, funnily enough, which actually not funnily enough, interestingly enough, um, is named um sorry graphite is a greek word which means to write so it's interesting that they would use graphite to create pencils if the original meaning of the the, the greek meaning of the word graphite is to write that's kind of interesting do you think they did that knowing that the greek meaning to graphite um yeah the greek me the greek word um <laughs> sorry i went blank there knowing that the greek word for graphite the greek meaning to graphite is to write do you think that they knew that that when they were finding the graphite mines or they were already named graphite but I thought that was interesting to mention that that was chemically analyzed in 1779 by K.W. Squealer, Squeal even, and named in 1789 by A.G. Werner. So check these people out. They're like science, yo, science. Don't know where I heard that. Remember, I think back in school, like back in school, secondary school, like I, got, I can't remember. Secondary school? No, I, I remember this in uni. Something about science. Hey, Amen. Or there might have been a show, or maybe it was a meme that we were repeating. Who knows? I can't remember. But yeah, science is dope, guys. Um, and learn more about it. The more you know, the more you grow. I feel like I didn't say that in the intro. Who knows? Um, it was all different. I got the video here, the video here, the camera here. Video is what you see after you record on the camera. <laughs> but anyway, that's pretty much the invention of the pencil. I hope you found it interesting and um, you caught, kept on with the story while going off on all my tangents. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that um, because it was a fun exploration. But I promised you an answer to a question by the end of this show. And I aim to deliver to you the answer to that question. So I asked you, what is the smallest or what bird is so small that it gets mistaken for an insect? And that bird is the bee hummingbird. Now, hummingbirds are known for being itty bitty creatures but a bee hummingbird are the tiniest versions of a hummingbird these shockingly small flying birds flying birds i say flying birds because penguins are birds and they can't fly there you go <laughs> these um they're actually the smallest birds in the world they are so minuscule that they are sometimes mistaken for insects, which, go figure with the name bee hummingbirds, makes you assume that they must be the size of a bee. But according to the National Orbo Auburn Society, they, these birds are uh, as small as insects. I think I just said that. <laughs> I think I was meant to say that the other way around. <laughs> so the birds are just 
two and a quarter inches long and they weigh less than less than a coin like less than one p less than one p imagine that like something that's two and a two and a quarter inches long and weighs less than one p a one p coin that's small and for anyone that is interesting interesting <laughs> interested in interested <laughs> i've got the humming uh, that's how you know it's coming to the end of the show in it when like these words coming together are just uh, they're not non-existent um <laughs> hummingbird um I thought it'd be interesting to also mention that the bee hummingbirds, you can find them in Cuba. So you won't find them in the United Kingdom. But if you were lucky enough enough to visit the country of Cuba, then you will also be lucky enough to hopefully see a bee hummingbird. The world's smallest bird. And now we have got to the end of the show. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been interesting. It's been different. There's a camera in the room. So you've been able to see my every actions. And how I react to things. And how I say things. And I don't know. Maybe it's something different. I know that you can definitely see that reflection of me in my glasses. Maybe I should be recording without glasses so you wouldn't see the reflection. But only on the flip side of that is that um, although I can kind of see, I I can't kind of (laughs) see. Like, there's blurs in it. Like I can see, but it's blurry. Uh, And I would much prefer to have glasses on so I can see better. But, you know... Maybe there'd be people out there, but oh my gosh, she looks so much better with the the glasses. And uh, but listen, guys, it's not that I'm wearing glasses for my own coolness. It's not fashion, cause I need to be able to see on these streets. <laughs> but anyway, um, hopefully, if you're listening to this, you actually get to see the video version, and I don't just talk about it in the audio version. You're just like, well, hang on. He's talked about it bare. He's talked about this video. There's not even a video. Maybe that's because it might take a bit of time for me to edit it. But I'm going to try and just skip Scott. Get it out by at least Tuesday. Tuesday by the latest. Um, uh, If it's not out on Mondays, the videos will always be out on Tuesday. Because it just takes a bit of time for editing. Um, But yeah, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Um, these are my glasses <laughs> and this was me hopefully you've enjoyed it and without further ado I'll call this the end of the show thank you for listening if you have enjoyed this episode and you want to tell your friends about it please do uh, if this is the first episode you've listened to then please 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 check out any other episode that I have released there are 20 other episodes so i mean you've got plenty of listening time and they're all an hour so it's like watching your favorite episode of game of thrones not that i'm saying i'm as high billing as game of thrones but hey man i've got layers i've got depth um i feel like that's a line from shrek and donkey says it <laughs> But yeah, man, I've got layers. There's more to find out. Um, The more you know, the more you grow. I've just got positive energy and positive flow. So I'm going to call this the end of the show because I can just say words and speak for the rest of my life. I'm sure I can speak for England, but Um, hey-ho. Let's stop that. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed the show. I'm just rambling now. Maybe I should have a podcast which is called I'm Just Rambling. And I just rambled for an hour. That was that's what this was. <laughs> but anyway, 
I've been Corey Williams, and this has been the More You Know Mondays. Thank you for listening and watching. Goodbye.